Verrooked is, in my opinion, the perfect sequel. Now, that's not necessarily to say that it's the best map, or even that it's better than the one that it's a sequel of. All I'm trying to say is that Verrooked really follows in the footsteps of the map that came before it, Nocturne and Toten, and builds on that formula without breaking any of the guidelines established by that first map. The big revolutionary changes to the zombies formula are coming very soon, but the actual gameplay of playing Verrooked feels a lot more like an extension of playing Noct than a huge game changer. It feels like a perfection of the vision that the developers had from the very beginning. Now, obviously, there's an elephant in the room that we have to address before getting into the rest of that thesis. Undeniably, the most iconic feature of Verrooked is the introduction of perks. For the first time, there was something to spend your points on that wasn't just more guns or opening doors. Around the map, there are now these semi-permanent upgrades that apply to you as a player character. You had Juggernog, which increased your health, so it now took 5 hits to kill you instead of just 2. Speed Cola halved the time that it took to reload every gun, which was huge because LMGs were still the most viable weapon to use, and they were obviously the ones that took the longest to reload. Double Tap Root Beer increases the fire rate of every single gun that you shoot. Before Pack-a-Punch, this was how you could upgrade your gun. More bullets fired in the same amount of time means that you do more damage per second, which is a form of upgrade, although in this case it came with the trade-off of having to reload more often, but again, that's where Speed Cola comes in. And last, we of course had Quick Revive, or maybe Revive Soda? In World at War, it only had the first effect of picking up teammates faster, it didn't have the Black Ops and Onward effect of being able to pick yourself up in a solo game, so it's definitely not the best perk, but it's still the cheapest, and you have the slot for it, so there's really no reason to actively avoid it. Honestly, these perks might be the most iconic things that have come out of Zombies as a mode in its entire history. Even today, so many years after their introduction back in World at War, if you try to find Zombies merch online, the thing you're most likely to find is merch that has those perk bottles on them, and honestly, it's almost always those original four perks back from Verrooked. Perkacola's as iconography has grown outside the game itself and have kind of become emblematic of the mode itself. It's a shorthand for Zombies as a whole. And back into the gameplay, the perks also feed straight into Game Design 101. To really hook the player into a game like this, there should be a sense of progression. You shouldn't be allowed to be at max power until you've earned it in-game. So, in addition to the perks costing points, which you have to earn by killing zombies over a number of rounds, they're also, diegetically, in vending machines that you have to turn the power on to even be able to access. If you think about it, this was the first quest in Zombies. It's very simple, you just need to go in the only direction that you can go anyway, but it's still something to do in addition to just the basics of survive. And everything about the design of the map was built to ensure that you knew that this was your goal. Not only could you not get these new exciting perks and you would be objectively weaker if you didn't turn the power on, if you were in a full lobby you would be physically separated from half the other people in the game and you wouldn't be able to revive them or help them out in any situations until you got to that power room and connected the map. The incentive of just being able to play with your friends was predicated on being able to get power on. Also, another new installation on this map was the doorways that were surrounded by the electric traps. These traps did infinite damage, but again, they would be powered off until you turn that power switch on. And since infinite damage means that even at round 100, you can kill zombies at the press of a button, it really incentivized you again to go for that power switch. Every single feature of the map is designed to guide you to that same goal of turning power on for a variety of different reasons, which makes the map feel really streamlined and cohesive. Even though the map was a lot physically bigger than Noct, which was our only frame of reference at the time, it didn't feel overwhelming or like there was too much to take in all at one time. It added all these disparate new features, but the mode still felt cohesive, it felt like you always knew what the goal was at all times. It still had that same simple design philosophy that drove Noct. And that's kind of what I'm getting at when I say that Verruck feels a lot like Noct Part 2. Even though, yes, of course, the perk system was groundbreaking, the actual moment-to-moment -moment gameplay still felt very much the same. Once again, the map is the interior of a single building, with tight hallways full of obstructions, and there's no real open areas to train zombies in. So instead, you're either camping in a corner, or you're running around the entire building in a big loop, killing every zombie you see on site, and maybe rebuilding barriers if you have the chance. The mystery box is still the best way to get the best weapons. Because the map is a bit bigger, there was one minor change added, which is the teddy bear. So there are a couple of different designated spawn points the box is allowed to be, and every once in a while, instead of getting a gun out of the box, your points will get refunded, a teddy bear will come up, and the box will move to one of those different places. Overall though, the gameplay you're actually doing as you spend time on this map is the same as it was before. 
The atmosphere, on the other hand, was a huge step up from Noct. Verukt is probably the scariest zombie map just from an environmental perspective. As a result of its troubled development, Noct felt very bare bones, it just felt like a generic, simple bunker. But Verukt, on the other hand, feels very lived in. It feels like it could be a real place, which makes the horror of it hit a lot harder. This was an asylum where people lived, worked, and were tortured and experimented upon. There's furniture lying around, it's in a state of disarray, but you could imagine how it would fit back together to be a normal living space. There are distinct rooms like the kitchen and the bathroom, which get your brain thinking about this as a real space, and then you turn a corner and there are padded cells with writing in blood on the walls and bloody knives. Even without the zombies around, this would be a terrifying place to be. Adding the zombies back in, they were both faster and smarter than they had been before, which obviously contributes to this oppressive atmosphere. Between the first two maps, the AI had been improved so that they now could hit through windows, they double hit faster, and this was the only map with super sprinters for a long time. You did not have a lot of opportunities to rest or reset on Verukt. And then to top it all off is the ambient sound design, which I think is the real star and really elevates Verukt to the next level. It's perfect for the horror atmosphere this map is going for, really it should just speak for itself. Honestly, genuinely unsettling. And yet, even with all that horror, the map isn't just depressing to play. After all, this was always intended to be an arcade style mode, so there was still some fun personality in a lot of elements. For example, the new perk machines all had cute little jingles. Also, some of the zombies would walk in a parody of the Nazi goose step. There was clearly a lot of love, in addition to a lot more resources being put into Verukt after the success that Noct had. As a horror fan, I absolutely love Verukt. I also just think it's really interesting as a historical artifact. It's almost a refined version of Noct. A look at what that early tower defense plus horror inspired vision the developers had would look like if they had the time and resources they wanted from the very beginning. Perks are probably tied only with Pack-a-Punch for the most important changes made to the mode in its entire 15 year history. It's a really difficult map, the intention is still not for you to be able to play it for really extended periods of time, but the time that you do spend on it, you will definitely be both immersed and kept on your toes. Zombies was still pretty early in its development, and the next map would already be a pretty big departure away from these ideas, but Verukt is really an example of the developers setting their sights perfectly and nailing exactly what they were going for. And I know you will never get